Andy Whittle of Rogers, welcome to High Files show in Belgrade. What brings you to Serbia? It's very interesting actually. I met my colleague uh, Radisa in Munich uh, earlier in the year and uh, I'd known him for a long time and he's doing a little bit of business with Audio Note. And uh, he said, oh, can you come to Belgrade for the show? And I said, yes, of course, I've never been to Belgrade. You know, we like to travel and see new markets. So uh, we drove down, for, left the UK on, um, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, and we got here Friday night. Rogers has been uh, widely known uh, to our public for the classic LS35 uh, BBC monitor. Tell us about your company philosophy and how have your uh, uh, products evolved over time? So originally, many, many uh, years ago, back in the sort of early 70s, Rogers started in 1947, but coming a bit forward to the more modern stuff. I was working with Rogers in the early 90s as the technical director, and we were making the LS35A and the LS59 BBC studio monitors. Later in 95, the company got taken over by a Far Eastern company and they moved most of the production over into Asia and eventually they ceased production. The last couple of years, I've been working with AudioNote and the Chinese people were talking to me about the possibility of reintroducing the 35A. So I said, well, you can do it, but we need to make it in the UK. Okay, so we went back to the BBC. We have a BBC license to say that we can manufacture under license and we started manufacture. It took us a little bit longer than we would have liked, but we're now in full manufacture and we're presenting at the show. What is today's customer perception on uh, uh, some characteristic details on LS35, such as tappled Velcro tape and uh, the foam frame? around uh, Twitter. Well again if you look at the initial BBC design because back in the sort of 70s when the BBC were researching their own speakers to use for their own broadcasting they had the the tie grill material the felt around the tweeter to help the dispersion and the, the 35A is a grade 2 monitor and it's used on outside broadcasting so they put it in a van and they'd have it on the mixing desk here so it's very important that the you know producer can hear what's going on so those um, felts and the grill material all help with the dispersion and the overall balance for the speaker. But visually? Visually yeah. exactly the same. Visually there are no yes, objections. Exactly the same. No, no, no. Uh, it's old school. If you go to the UK and you want to buy a classic British car like a Morgan, yeah, it has this style, has a hood, the little windscreen wipers. It's the same. You're buying the character. Yeah? How would you describe the performance of the new LS59 uh, uh, loudspeaker? Uh, is it still a classic Rogers or uh, is it a departure from the heritage towards a more modern approach uh, to reproduction of modern sound and modern production recording? Not really, because what we've done is we've taken the 5.9 back to the original. Again, we've been made under license. We can't deviate from the BBC specification. Fortunately, Audax started remaking the HD34 tweeter. So the original 5.9 had an Audax HD34. So we've gone back to Audax and we can buy that tweeter again. So that's enabled us to do that. We've tooled up the woofer and the PVC surround because part of the termination for the BBC for the voicing of the speaker is to do with the mid-band performance. So it's very critical for the BBC when they're monitoring to hear what's going on. And they do a lot on voice, obviously, uh, to, to get the correct termination on the speaker. So we've tooled up the cone and surround. And again, the crossover is made exactly to the original specification, as is the cabinet. This is a 9mm birch ply with damping on the cabinet and again the Tigan grille. So if you looked at the LS59 that Rogers made 20 years ago, and you look at the 59 we've got upstairs, it's nine identical. An amplifier with Rogers' name on it was spotted this weekend at High Files show. Uh, tell us more about it. So uh, what happened 20 years ago was we had an association with AudioNote, and Rogers commissioned AudioNote UK to uh, do us a, a valve amplifier. But because the Rogers speakers are a little bit low sensitivity, uh, we went for a 6L6 push-pull tube amp. So this is about 18, 20 watts, pure class A, with a built-in phono stage. So um, after we finished uh, 20 years ago, I've gone back to AudioNote because I'm very um, close to Peter Quartrop, the owner of AudioNote, and we commissioned an, a new version of the E20. So AudioNote have redone the board for us. We've improved the output transformers. We're just tooling up a new chassis, which will be aluminium non-magnetic. Um, and we have the prototype here. This is the circuit board. The new chassis is not quite ready yet. So early next year, we will reintroduce the E20. So we've got the LS35A, BBC Grade 2 monitor, LS59, BBC Grade 1 monitor, and then the new version of the E20A Rogers tube amp. That will be all assembled in the UK. What would be the best loudspeaker match for E20 loudspeaker? Um, it's interesting because it being a tube amp, the, the output tappings are set to 8 ohms. So the 5.9 is 8 ohms, the 15 ohm 3.5A is obviously a little higher. But again, the 3.5A is, is very good for close 
sort of I say late night li listening and the 5.9 is a higher SPL speaker. So they have a similar character. So you can use the E20 like we have upstairs with the 3.5. And then if you want a higher sound pressure level, you can move up to the LS5.9. But you can use the E20 to drive both. Thank you for this interview and wish you a successful exhibition in Belgrade. It's a great pleasure being here in Belgrade. Thank you very much.